In this video, I'm going to discuss the biggest mistakes that users tend to make when creating round features. First off, sometimes users will create rounds as arcs and fillets in a sketch, especially one of the earlier sketches in the model. And the problem with this is, by having it so early in the model tree, people, people might accidentally dimension other features to the tangent edges of those rounds. And also, that base feature is going to end up very complicated. For example, in the image on the right, I have a bunch of fillets in the sketch. And when you turn on the dimension display and the constraints display, you can see that the sketch ends up being very complicated. So making changes to it will be difficult later on. Also, when you put the fillets in the sketch themselves, you can't place the rounds lower in the model tree because they are part of the feature. Also, if someone wants to do analysis later on, they won't be able to suppress those fillets uh, in order to make the geometry simpler for meshing. So the simple thing is, make your base sketches simple and then create rounds as their own separate features later on. Another mistake that I see users make is that they will create a uh, round that only has one edge in it or create multiple round sets that only contain one edge. And it's mainly because they don't realize that if you hold down the control key, you can have multiple edges in the same set and all those edges in the same set will be driven by the same radius value. Another mistake that I see is that sometimes users will only create a round feature with a single set. They don't know that you can make it with multiple sets. And the problem with this is that you end up with a really cluttered model tree. So when you can, put multiple round sets within the same round feature. For example, in this image, I'm creating all the vertical edges uh, that are going to be rounded together or machined together in the same round feature. It'll make the model tree much more easier to navigate. You can choose as references for a round feature entities other than edges. For example, you can create a surface to edge round and also a surface to surface round. And this is advisable, especially if you think that those edges might change later on. Edges tend to be the least stable references when you are creating features. So when you can create your features going from a surface to surface, they tend to be more robust. Also, when selecting references, you can use what are called intent references. And intent references means that it will grab the edges associated with a feature rather than explicitly selecting individual edges. And that way, if the underlying feature changes, then the round feature is going to update automatically. Let's talk about a couple of mistakes that users make that pertain to design for manufacturing. First off, users will, tend, will sometimes select the wrong radius that doesn't correspond to diameters of tools that they actually have. And also, when you are thinking about the manufacturing process, think about how those edges are going to be machined. So for example, if you have a pocket that you're trying to machine out, uh, you generally want to have the cutter radius be greater than a third of the depth of the cavity because if you have a really small radius compared to the depth of the cavity, you're going to have to use a really long tool and that can end up with a lot of chatter and it'll be hard to control the tolerances and also you can end up with a lot of stress on the tool and end up breaking more tools. Also, for your vertical corners, you can reduce the wear on the tool by having a radius slightly larger than the tool that's going to be machined, uh, that's going to be used to machine it. And also for the floors of a pocket, you could use either a small radius or no radius whatsoever so that you could use an end mill rather than a ball mill. 
And probably the biggest mistake that I see, especially for newer users, people who haven't done a lot of design and manufacturing, is that they just put rounds on everything. Every single corner, they're going to break with a round. And that's not a good practice. Generally, you want to put your rounds on ones that reflect how the part's actually going to be manufactured. And also, if you have corners, especially re-entrant corners uh, that are going to be load paths, you want to put rounds in there in order to reduce your stress. But situations in which you don't want to have rounds, uh, if you take a look at the image over on the right, uh, the edges, especially the edges of that pocket in the upper right and also those outside edges that's going to require an additional operation it's going to require additional machining that's unnecessary and also especially you see at the bottom edge i have a full round on there that's going to be really really hard to manufacture and expensive and cause uh, additional setup so Again, don't just blindly throw fillets everywhere in your model. All right, let's take a look at a few examples of this. So first off, let's say I want to make a pocket on the surface of this model. Let's go and create a sketch on this surface. Click on the sketch button again, sketch mode. Let's change to a sketch view. And I'm going to go to the palette and grab a simple cross shape and drop it on here. Let's use a scale of one and I'm just gonna drag it on the center. Let me change to a wireframe mode so that you can see the shape on here. And I'll click the close button and hit the check mark. And let me Hit the check mark out of here. Right now you're seeing a sketch, a bad sketch on the bottom of the surface. Let me hide that for a second. So now that I have this sketch on here, let's go back to a shaded mode and I'm going to create an extrude. And let's go into the part. Let's go through here to a depth of one and hit the check mark. So again, with this particular example, I created my simple sketch here. Now it needs some fillets. I didn't put the fillets in the sketch itself. So when I go to create my fillets, I could select my different edges, but if I tap the right mouse button, I can get to the intent edges, which allows me to grab the edges associated with this feature. And then I can change my radius value. And first I start off with that value of 0.25. Oh wait, I generally if I can, I want them to be greater than a third of the radius. So maybe I'm going to change this if I can to 0.35 and then hit the check mark. So that's what's advisable. You create your extrude and then throw your rounds on there later on. What would not be so good is if I had a sketch and let me edit definition of that sketch to show it to you. So here's an example is if I tried to put the fillets in the sketch itself. And you can see that it's absolutely cluttered with all the different constraints. And I didn't even get the dimensioning scheme correct. Uh, it's hard for me to figure out how I want to get all the uh, different symmetry constraints. So I end up with the correct dimensioning scheme rather than having two separate dimensions over here for the uh, width of this part of the plus sign. All right, let's take a look at another part and this one is going to be machined. So let's say I want to put some fillets on the inside corners. We can go to the round feature. And again, one mistake I see is that people select an edge over here. Oops, let's go to grab this edge over here. And let's say I'm going to use that radius of 0.35, then I hit the check mark and, oh wait, I've got another edge over on this side. Let's create our round and then pick this edge over here. That's good. Go to the vertical edge on the other side. Let's put our fillet in there.
and get our fourth corner over here. Let's put in our round, select this edge, same value. So now if I take a look at my model tree, I've got four separate round features down here at the bottom for those four edges. That is not a good practice. Let me select these other three edges here, and excuse me, round features, and delete them. And I'm going to edit definition of this round. And again, if I hold down the control key, I can select multiple edges, and that way they're all driven by the same radius value. And again, I'm choosing a radius that is going to be greater than a third of the depth of this. But here I have a value of 0.35, and that's not close to any of the different tools that I have. If I have, say, a three-quarter inch tool, that's going to give me a radius of 3 eighths, and I want it to be a little bigger than 3 eighths, so maybe I'll use 0.38. Or I could say, hey, let's maybe, you know, even make it a little bigger, maybe use a radius value of 0.4. Talk to your manufacturing people about what would be good for them in terms of tolerances and having less load on the tools that are being used to machine these. So I've got the first set in this round feature. Maybe within the same feature, I'm going to take care of some of the other vertical edges in here as well. So I could create a second set and then pick the other edges of pockets that might be machined out. And as these ones would be a little shallower in terms of the pocket being machined, I could go with a smaller radius. So maybe in this case here, I could use a value of 0.28. If I'm going to use a half inch diameter tool, which would be a radius of 0.25, make it a little bigger just to reduce the amount of wear. And for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to select the rest of the additional edges that I would want in this round set. But again, you could put multiple sets in a single feature, especially if you're able to group them logically together. All right, I'll hit the check mark for that one. Now let's take a look at another big mistake just filleting everything. So we take a look at this part over here, and so I think about how this would be machined in this operation. I probably have a face milling operation on this surface, and it'd be really nice to do a profile milling sequence around the outside edges. So in this case, I might want to put some fillets on these vertical edges just to make everything simpler. So that would be appropriate, but what would not be so appropriate would be putting some uh, fillets on these outside edges over here. So if I hit this with a round operation over there, well, this is going to require someone to come in with an additional operation with a special tool that'll get that edge in there. Same thing is if I hold down the control key and get that edge in there. Again, they're gonna have to come in here and do this with a special operation. And what would be really, really awful is if I select these two edges over here, and if I go to the sets tab, I can say, hey, throw in a full round over there. So again, milling that out, uh, using machining on that, just would be not cost effective, would just be unnecessary, so again, don't do that if you don't have to. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.